All right, let's talk about some advanced features in the optimizer. And uh, hopefully you've had a chance to watch the basics video for this. So that gives you a good idea of pretty much how it works. But let's, um, I'm going to clear this out. So remember that anytime you change something in your drawing, whether it's a part number in the elevation framing system or uh, an opening size or horizontal or anything changes, anything that would affect daylight openings or cut lengths, you're going to want to get elevation parts again. So when we do that, we hit get elevation parts and it basically blanks out the optimized uh, stock length list and just gives us a fresh list of cut pieces. And I like to hit this maximize button so it shows me the full list. And, um, and remember you can sort it by part type, you can sort it by anything by clicking up here and you can also um, drag things up into this area to help kind of subcategorize uh, the list. So now one of the cool things about this window, let's go back to the, the smaller size, is you can edit a cut length, let's say. Like if this part here needed to be, it looks like it's a left wall jam part. If this needed to be a different size, I'm going to check the save box. I'm going to click in this column that has the little edit uh, icon, the little green pencil icon. And I'm going to change it to say 125. Um, what I want to do next is click off of that record so I, it makes, I make sure that it saves that change by just going to a different record. And then that means uh, when I hit optimize now, it's going to use that cut length instead of the length that it figured. Now you always want to try and change the, the edit the framing system parts or make sure your drawing is correct so that you're getting the right cut piece sizes. But if, if all else fails, if there's no other way to do it, you can easily do it here just by editing a part uh, and then check the checkbox to save that. That way if you hit get elevation parts again it won't um, over, it won't lose that change that you made. So the other thing you can do is add a cut part. So let's go ahead and add uh, just this first one, E0002 uh, it looks like. First thing you do is you select it. I like to always click on this left uh, little column here um, so that way it selects the entire line but you can easily just click in this area too. But you can kind of see that it's selected better that way. Anyway, so we hit select parts. Um, you can add it to a specific elevation or just let it add it to whichever one it came up with. You know, you can click in this list and you could pick the elevation. Now, you tell it the quantity. Say I need two of these and you tell it your cut length. So you can enter either fractions or decimals. So I can do 36.5 or I could have done one half. And then I have to add it to the uh, cut list in the optimizer. So you'll see right away it added it back there. So now I'm done. You can keep adding pieces or you can just close it. And if the part number is not in that list that means you need to add it to your master part list and you can do that through the main uh, menu tree in the program. And so now I've got those two added and I should have the other one that is um, changed, the one I changed. So now I'm going to go back. So now I'm ready to optimize. I'm going to hit optimize and it's basically going to include those pieces into the optimization, the one I changed and also the ones I added. And so this is your optimized metal list of uh, stock links. There's a couple different ways to optimize it. I think when you create the elevation it lets you pick, or maybe it was create the job, now I forget. Um, but you can also change it in the optimizer, which is a logical place to do it. The program defaults to best yield, so that's going to give you the least possible scrap. Um, best yield material, but it's also going to mix up the cut length. So short pieces might come before or after long pieces uh, and any combination with that. So the easy to cut uh, optimizer means that it's going to group the, the same cut pieces together more often. So it's going to start with longer pieces, group them, and then go to the next shorter pieces and group those. So keep that in mind, um, but that's what those two things mean. Now the one time you might want to use easy to cut since we were looking at that, I select that and I hit close, is if you want to edit a stock length. And let's say you've got some scrap lying around the shop. Like this one here, it's only using 73 inches. So I could easily say, oh, I've got a 100 inch piece of this uh, E0002. And I guess that's the one I added, but that's okay. I've got a 100 inch piece in the shop that I can use. And 
it's not the cost of it isn't 251 the cost is like 25 bucks or something let's just say you know we're giving our customer a deal um, so we do that we change our price the weight we don't really use the weight for anything yet but um, you can always edit that too so anything that's got the green icon we can change and I've changed the stock length and the price and I make sure this save box is checked I'm gonna click off of that record to make sure that um, it saves it and then I'm gonna go back up here and hit optimize now since I've selected the easier cut optimizer it should let me use that part if I if I had it on the uh, better yield optimizer it would basically keep that change that I made and then throw in another E0002 so that's not re really what you want to do when you edit a stock length so it's similar to what would happen if we say added a stock part if we add a stock part to the list it's actually not going to use that stock part it's just going to add it in so you've got an extra stock piece that uh, is whatever part you picked so you could just as easily do that in the final parts report you could add the pieces there so I guess you've got two choices for that but you can actually edit a stock length that it's actually using re-optimize and then the changes you made will will stay as long as this checkbox is saved uh, or you know save checkbox is clicked so you can print a list of all these cut pieces that's just in a basic grid format same thing with your stock length list and um, this is where you'd go to print your cut list of course if you delete a stock if it's one that you added that's fine you can delete it or you can just uh, uncheck it and hit re-optimize and it'll just wipe it out um, automatically that way as well so the export button that's if you're going to export to a, a saw an automated stop machine and the setting for that is in the print reports um, window under options export options so uh, that's a setting there so you can click that it'll create a file for you to send to a, an automated stop and you can change the finish color here you can also change it back at the job level in the jobs window and um, that's pretty much it so again the, if you print the stock list it's basically what you're looking at here only in a printed form but your actual cut list when you print your cut list that's going to give you a different layout that's meant more for fabrication so you're reading through the um, the part number a description of the part the actual stock length of the part that was the one I changed to 100 inches and each individual cut from each stock length so here's one with multiple stock lengths and it's showing you this is what you need to cut from each stock length and then it's showing you your actual lineal feet and the number of stock lengths required so that's your typical cut list um, now here's another thing if you want to price your job by lineal foot and not optimize it and figure out how many stock lengths it is all you need to do is print this report the print lineal report so you don't even have to optimize because all this is doing is just totaling up all the cut pieces and giving you a price based on number of footage um, divided by the uh, or stock length divided by number of feet used so so that's how it's figuring out your unit price uh, and so forth but um, so really that skips the whole optimization thing but it's something you would do in the optimizer window is print your lineal foot report and um, Oh, you can also manually optimize material just by creating a dummy job. I think we have a training video on that, but I'll just mention it again. Uh, create a dummy job that doesn't really have any parts, or create a job and just don't hit get elevation parts. That'll never fill this list with the drawing cuts, but then you just start adding cut pieces like we did to this, only you're adding it to a blank list. So once you do that, you can optimize it just like usual, and you can print the cut list. So... Um, keep all that in mind and that's uh, a little more detail on what the optimizer itself does